I'm Robbie Thigpen, and welcome to the Sargassum Podcast. I'm Jenna Contuccio. And I'm Francesca Elmer, and we are your hosts for today. We are going to share with you the latest ideas and concepts about Sargassum and Sargassum beaching events, which have become an international challenge. Let's get ready to learn together. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sargassum Podcast, brought to you by the Kimberly, uh, Florida International University's Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Center. And I'll, uh, we got a really great show for you today, and I uh, want to welcome uh, my uh, co-host, Francisca, and I want to think she's got a little something to say. Yeah, Robbie, um, I'm doing good again. As you know, I've had COVID last week. And looking forward to you coming over here soon. What is it? Three more oh, weeks? So, so, Until you come to yeah, Mexico? Yeah, something like that. We've got the uh, our uh, Maya textbook um, at the printer right now. And uh, as soon as we get get that back, we're going to head on down there. And I'll pretty, I'm pretty excited about this. First science book written in Maya in over 500 years. Wow, that is exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Um so our guest today is Rolando Chavez Penejera. He is the Latin American general manager for the Enviro Clean segment of DESMI and the head of DESMI Civit di- division. DESMI is a Danish manufacturer of pumps, pumping systems, environmental cleaning equipment, and related products and services. It was founded in 1834 with headquarters in Denmark and provides pumping solutions to end markets, including marine and offshore, industrial, utility, and defense and fuel. The company also provides environmental solutions for oil spill response, seaweed collection, and cleaning waterways. Next to managing oil spills, they also started in 2014 designing products for sargassum management. Well, welcome, Rolanda. That sounds like a mouthful. Sounds like you've got your fingers in a lot of different pies. Thank you, Robbie. Hi, Francisca. Yeah, uh, the office is located in Ecuador. So Ecuador has no issues with seaweed, actually, but uh, we decided to do something to try to support the hotels and uh, people in uh, the Caribbean with the Sargassum. Well, excellent. Well, welcome to the podcast. We like to, we like to start off our podcast with the same question for everybody, every time. And that question is, what is Sargassum to you? Uh, it, it, this can be fun because the first time I see Sargasso was in 2014, was during a family holidays in Dominican Republic. We been in Punta Cana, and one of the days my kids and me goes to swim and to sea and have contact with the Sargasso. At that time, I didn't know what exactly this plan is, but the next day I have a lot of red points in my skin, so I stay two days in my room. <laughs> In, uh, in, uh, in a nice resort, thinking I had a kind of reaction to the food. The third day, I go to the swimming pool. I see more people with these red points and the skin. So I see the doctor, and doctor said it's related to sargassum. So then I go again to the sea and just trying to figure out what to do with sargassum. And then I say, maybe we can use one of the existing products, uh, booms, of our ears for the oil spill to try to avoid to have those things coming to the beach. So for me, Sargasso is a personal battle. I mean, I need to create something to support uh, or avoid uh, this Sargasso to come to the beach. This is my deal. Excellent. I don't think we've quite had a response like that before, uh, but that's a, a, a really <laughs> unique introduction, I believe, to Sargasso. Thank you. I think so. <laughs> yeah, um, as you already kind of said, um, it was kind of a happy coincidence that somebody working for Desmi got an uh, adverse reaction to sargassum. And, um, but can you tell us a bit more how Desmi decided to make a barrier for sargassum management? Yeah, and it, this was in 2014. And then every year we have a kind of summit with the different offices worldwide, and then we propose some new projects. Desmi has um, a very nice depar- department for research and development. So I say, look guys, this is an issue. We have uh, this uh, algae coming to the Caribbean, 
and it is not just Dominican Republic. At that time, we just begin to see which countries are affected by Sargassum and create a kind of pilot project. So Desmi decided to make his own investment. In the beginning, they gave us uh, around half a million US to develop Absolution. Once we have the green light from Desmi, we say, okay, where to go? And then begin to talk with um, some different uh, different, different um, authorities in the Caribbean. At that time, Sir Marnat has his own uh, regulations about how to deal with Sargassum. And we have an approach with the Minister of Environment in Dominican Republic. So in Dominican Republic, they have not uh, given a guide on how to deal with Sargassum. So I say here, maybe we have more freedom to test different options. And we have the opportunity to work with the Gran Sirenis Hotel. They have hotels in Dominican Republic and Mexico as well. So they say, okay, guys, we can support your idea. We will allow you to do some tests in our facilities. So we moved from Denmark, people, equipment, and uh, anchors to do our first uh, test. We use an existing inflatable boom. And in this uh, specific hotel, they have heavy waves. So we say, if we create something for heavy waves, we can do in every location. The concept was to try to content the sargassum, put the booms in front of the beach, and avoid the sargassum to reach to the area, but the concept failed completely, and the boom as well. So we destroy it, and the first uh, test, uh, easily 300 meters of boom because of the weather conditions and to have the permanent installation of the boom with anchors. Later on, we say, okay, the concept is not the right one. The boom is not the right one. We go for the next step and create a new boom. The new boom uh, was installed in the Dominican Republic. We got around 70% of efficiency. We were not happy with the 70%. And then we say, okay, we now know that the concept to divert not contain the bird, the oil, the sargassum to the sides. It's a good idea, but we need to do something with the boon. Then we invest into the third model. This model was installed in some power plants to prevent the sargassum to go to the cooling system. But the boon at that time was really expensive to do. So it was something that is not really uh, possible for many public beaches or hotels to pay for it. So we continue with the research and then in 2017, it was not a gas on the water. So the project was more or less in a standby in 2018, the Sargasso come again and then we go to Mexico. At that time, we make the presentation to Semarnat, Semar and other uh, authorities and got the approval for make the test in Mexico. Now with a different uh, model. Then it was our first mesh boom. It's not a net, it's a mesh. So it means the shape of the squares never change. And we use some specific uh, products that has been in the market for many years. Desmi has a division named Desmi Fishing. So it is a mesh created for fish farming in open sea. So then we saw this is the way to continue. And we made three changes up to get what we have now and the actual model let me name it Desmi Meshbun that is in the market now. So this is how Desmi got involved in the project. And then we when we saw when we divert the sargassum to the sides of the configuration, it's mandatory to remove the sargassum from the boon. So you cannot just divert, you need to remove it. And Desmi has um, a division making warboats for many years, and we have warboats in Mexico with the Pemex, uh, in Colombia with the uh, Ecopetrol, and many warboats related to oil spill operations. So it is something completely similar. They have a, a belt able to remove sargassum, able to remove trash or oil, but in all those cases, storage capacity is an issue. So we say, okay, we need to think in a different way. And then we create the Desmi Sea Total Unit, is how we call it. And it is a, a system that is actually working in Mexico for three, three and a half years now. 
Orlando, that's a very uh, uh, detailed description. We really appreciate that. I think deflection probably is a good thing. Um, so exactly how are these barriers going to uh, help function and protect these uh, you know, intakes um, for power plants and, and beaches and even these ecosystems, you know, the seagrass meadows, which is a very important juvenile nursery habitat for everything we like to eat out of the Caribbean? Yeah, when we when we thought about the project and discussed with our environmental authorities, many of them they say that we must try to contain sargasso in open water, so far away from the beach. But I don't know if you have time maybe to see the those patches of sargasso coming to the beach. Sometimes you see a lot of sargasso coming, but this sargasso never sometimes just doesn't end in the beach. They just change the current and waves and this goes far away to the shore. So if you try to do something in offshore, the deepest of the water is an issue to have the boon anchored. In the beginning, when we do the first project, we followed the IMO recommendations and we use anchors every 60 meter. And the concept failed completely. So right now we are anchoring the boon every 15 meter, both sides. So if you want to, protect the beach, you need to be close to the beach. So the boon itself, what is uh, meant to do is to float and avoid sargasso to come to the beach. But if you just try to content the sargasso, if you just try to put a boon and then allow the sargasso to push against the boon, the layer will increase, goes under, or in some cases when you don't have too much uh, waves and wind, the sargasso itself die, they lose the small bubbles, sinks, and goes under the boon. So the boon can be a good idea, but always diverting. So I mean, not containing, diverting, making the sargasso to go to a specific areas. We call it collection areas, and we have them a removal unit. So without the removal unit, the boon itself is not going to work. So you, you're, you're putting these new weights, uh, which I guess, I guess they seem to be working every 15 meters and all. And uh, how heavy, what, what's, what are the, what's the weight of the, the uh, weight, uh, the anchors you're using? Yeah. In, uh, in Mexico, we are not allowed to use concrete blocks as anchors. In some other countries, they use concrete blocks, local made. So it is something like 380 kilo, more or less, but... It is not the right solution because when you have heavy winds, the boon itself will move even the concrete blocks. And if you have corals, they, they will destroy the corals. So what we are doing now is to use a specific anchoring points. In case of uh, rocks, we drill 40 centimeters with a special drill. And then we have some kind of uh, two inches holes and use stainless steel rods I can send you a picture. And those roads are going to be with cement and the, concrete and the seabed. So in the surface and the seabed, you will see just a small A-let. And then from this point, we use ropes to go and anchor the, the, the wound. In if you have sand, we use some specific uh, anchors named manta ray. They go two meters deep. And the sand, and again, in the surface, on the and the and 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 the and, and the concrete in, in the in the area when you have the connection, you will see again just a shackle. And then we use um, rope and buoys to anchor the booms. So we are trying to protect the environment, inclusive in terms of how we anchor the boom. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> what is the diameter of the holes that you drill? It is just uh, something like two inches. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. You are very welcome. Yeah, that does sound really interesting, and especially anchoring in sand can be so challenging. So I'm I'm happy you found a, a good way of doing so and going down two meters. That's that's pretty impressive. Um, so most beaches and coastlines hit with sargassum are on the windward side of, or the wavy side of the island, which makes it even more challenging to manage sargassum, especially using booms. Um, so you said with your first place that you tested, you already had a place with a lot of waves. Um, so how, 
how what kind of effort did you put into producing producing something that can withstand waves and how how bad can the waves be before the barrier doesn't function anymore yeah when we got the uh, semarnat authorization to make our project in mexico then we go again to the sirenis hotel and they are located in akumal so akumal it's a heavy waves and heavy winds location so we say e again if we can do it here with the new product we can do everywhere so the first stage we go around two kilometers far from the beach and make some anchor points and install 120 meter of boon just for test. So we need to see how good they can perform in waves. The floats itself, what we produce for the sargasso mesh boon, it is able to support waves up to two meter. But once you have the two, uh, these, those conditions, the boon itself will follow the waves, so it's not an issue. But when we have winds over 55 kilometers per hour, 34 uh, miles per hour, we recommend to remove the boon from the water. It is because if you consider you have the boon itself, it's not just the, the boon. If the winds are over, it can be maybe a storm, and can be dangerous for the people or for the facility. So when we have those conditions, we recommend to remove the boom from the water. So in general terms, we are able to contain sargasso up to two meters high waves. But if the winds are over 34 miles per hour, we just remove the boom from the water and reinstall it. It's, it's actually not a difficult task. It takes uh, hours to remove the bone from the water and at least one day to put and install the bone again in the water. I was just going to ask how long it takes, but you just answered that. Yeah, to, to remove, as, as an example, to remove 600 meters of bone in the Sirenis Hotel takes to the crew uh, around three hours to remove the bone from the water. So it is not a big deal. So if we have a kind of... Uh, alert of a storm, or we have the wind guru saying that the winds are going to be top, we decided to remove the boon. And this is uh, our work of four, five guys, three hours time to remove the boon from the water. The issue is when you keep the boon in the shore because of the winds, you don't let the boon in the shore. You always try to protect the boon. And this uh, movement from the warehouse to the shore again and put it in the water again, it's the process that takes longer time. So to reinstall the boon usually is in one day operation. I totally understand that we uh, made our own free floating boom um, in St. Vincent and we only had to move 60 meters of it from the warehouse to the water. And it took 10 people and six shopping carts to load that boom up and slowly, slowly move it to the shore. So. I can only imagine if you have 600 meters of it that it is quite a bit of a, um, a work to put all those pieces back to the shore. Yeah, I think the the, the huge difference is Desme is an industrial product. So it's not too much a labor uh, job to create the boon, it's more uh, industrial. So we have those belts made specifically in, uh, the, in, in, in Desme. And then we have the floats, our easy assembly floats, and the ballast weight. So in general terms, the boon is not a heavy, as heavy as it can be for these kind of applications because the strength of the fabrics is really high compared with the light of the weight of the, of the fabric. Yes, and you've got 15-meter sections, so they're quite easy to handle rather than having it all in one big section. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, this is one of the issues when we consider the cost price of the boon itself, one of the costs uh, goes to the end connectors. I mean, when you connect one section with other. We have been uh, discussing with the different uh, customers and different uh, people about what if we avoid to use those. But in terms of easy to manage, the aluminum end connectors uh, has been in the industry for more than 45 years. So it's something that can withstand the sea conditions and make it easier to connect and disconnect any section. So in case you have a damage in one section, you just go, disconnect the section, put another, 
and you have your complete boom installed again in a few minutes. So it's a cost, it's an expensive part of the boom, but it is really good to have this opportunity to replace sections, small sections. Yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Well, y y you know, the these blockades, these booms, if you will, they only function if you got a way to remove the sargassum from the water. Um, tell us a little bit about the your technology you're using to skim the sargassum out of the sea. Yeah, I, I mentioned already that Desmi has his own line of warboats. And if we go for a warboat, the storage capacity on deck is an issue. So in general terms, when you have an oil spill, as soon as you have the tanks full of oil, you cannot continue operating with the warboat. So then we said, okay, Desmi has a big, big number of pumps. One of those pumps, and as an example, is using for fish farming to allow to transfer salmon alive from the cages offshore to the shore. So we can transfer a live fish through pipes. So we say, why? what if we use the same concept to transfer sargassum from the water to the shore? So in the beginning, we made some tests with different pumps in Dominican Republic. So one of the pumps was really amazing. We got around uh, 20, 25 cubic meters of sargassum per hour. But we didn't consider the sand content in the water. So the sand is, more, is going to destroy most of the pumps so easy because the friction. So then we continue researching what kind of Desmi pump we can use for this application. And then we made some modifications and create a unit that is able to remove sargassum from the water. The most important thing is before the sargassum reach the beach. Because if you you know all of you know that when Sargasso goes to the beach, it takes a lot of sand, and hotels are losing sand. And when you try to remove the sand, the Sargasso, you use a lot of power, and you need to use uh, heavy equipment. So we connect the boom itself as a pocket, and in the middle we have the removal unit. So the removal unit, based on the Semarnat requirements has a belt, so in terms is similar like a warboat. So they have a belt to collect the sargassum, and then they have a kind of hopper, and in the hopper they have a transfer system. So the actual system is able to to transport sargassum up to 200 meters, 600 feet away from the shore. So in in those hotels where we have this operation. They have pipes connected to the removal unit to a specific area. So if you consider the advantages of this unit, you don't need to have a crew. You don't need to have a license. You can operate even in bad weather conditions, and you can work in shallow water conditions. So of course, it's not a perfect solution. But in general terms, you are not restricted the use because of the capacity of storage, because you are sending all the sargassum to the shore. So it's just a manner to have a no space, and maybe you can have a truck collecting the sargassum and bringing to the final disposition place. The great thing about the unit is the sargassum without sand can be used for different applications. So you don't have to wash the sargassum because it comes free of sand. And other, other advantage is the number of hours you can work with the unit. So the actual unit has a performance of 20 to 30 cubic meters of sargassum per hour. And at the Hotel Palladium, where we are working now, we have two units working. And every day we remove around 200 cubic meters of sargassum a day. So in some days, it can be eight hours operation. In other days, it can be five hours operation. And it's something that can be done continuously, even in bad water conditions. So this is the great advantage of this idea. Um, did you test your unit for bycatch, for like animals living in sargassum, if they um, go through the pump system or if they stay out? Yeah, this was one of the first requirements of Semarnat when we bring the system to Mexico. That is why we have the bell. So uh, I can tell you, when you have the sargassum at the boon, 
really close to the beach when we have the operation. You don't have too much sea life alive living or staying with the sargassum. Of course, you have small, um, how you call it, uh, shims, kind of small shims, so small, um, I don't know the word in English. In Spanish, we say uh, cangarejitos. Exactly. <laughs> So, but it is not really heavy things or, or I mean, uh, big animals or big fishes coming with the sargassum. It's not. As soon as you have some kind of movement in the water, they all those those fishes goes away from the unit. The first the first unit we create was for the Sirenis Hotel, and we did it with a diesel unit to operate the system. So uh, it was good, but the noise was an issue. So we replaced later on for the electrical driving unit at short. I mean, it's not any electrical component in the water. It's electrical power pack giving hydraulic power to manage through hoses to rotate the system, the belt, and the transfer system. So it's very friendly system and no noise. Wow, that's that's good to know. First, yeah, that all the that the animals actually avoid it, and that you also thought about the noise. Because a lot of people forget about the noise and how that affects the fish. And emissions as well. Um, emissions, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the diesel in the water would not be good and in the air. Um, so who are your customers? Um, who buys your barriers from you for the sargassum barriers? As soon as we've been in Mexico for the first uh, project, the CEO of the company goes to Mexico to see by itself that this name is not going to be compromised because of a crazy idea. So the requirements from Desmi before we launch a project or we launch a product worldwide is to have at least three years experience of how they work. So that means since the mesh boom was launched for the some hotels, uh, changes has been made to the boom. So the actual boom has differences with the first one. Same with the sea turtle. We have the sea turtle one, and we call it Mark one, Mark two, and Mark three. The actual version is Mark, Mark three. So we don't have too many customers. We have partners in this stage. I mean, they know it is a project that can be in the process to have some modifications, upgrades, changes. So uh, customers for us is marinas, is hotels, and power plants right now. We are not dealing with uh, public beaches at this stage. We had an approach with the Mexican Navy for the public beaches. And right now we have the product with this three years period of time. So we are able and ready to sell to public beaches as well. So once the three years are up, you can work with public beaches. Do you get that correctly? Yeah, yeah. And uh, sell widely uh, to customers because you always have a new product. It's a new idea. It's a new development. Something could be grown. So you need to be sure that you don't compromise the name of the company. It's a 100, almost 190 years company with a lot of equipment. It's a huge company in terms of turnover. So the Sargasso project is just a very small piece of the big turnover of the company. So uh, reputation and proven technology is the key for Desmi. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Rolando, that, that's really nice. I, I personally appreciate, uh, or I think all of us at the podcast appreciate that you're considering the, the fauna that's living in these things before you extract it and all. That's always been a big question for us is, and all of those just because. Um, Anyway, um, you've got this product, your a proto third prototype, I guess you're working on that you're hopefully you'll be able to, um, you know, begin distributing soon. Are you working on any other things that might, uh, or any other products that might help deal with sargassum? Yeah. And, uh, in the beginning we were supporting some projects to see what we can do with the sargassum. I mean, uh, it's some companies trying to do fertilizing, some companies trying to do medic medicine, some are trying to do paper. So Desmi just left this part and now is focused how to improve the removal capacity. We know the bone, the Desmi mesh bone is working so good. So we are happy with the performance. We create three versions of the unit. 
of this uh, floating mesh for uh, be able to support very heavy waves in open water conditions. And right now, two weeks ago, I have a meeting in Denmark before we launch officially the Desmi Sea Turtle solution worldwide in the interspill in Amsterdam that was uh, last week. So two weeks ago, we had this meeting in Denmark and we got the approval to make two new units. The idea on what we are focused now is to improve their mobile capacity. We want to uh, reduce the number of hours of operation. So we create, um, I mean, it's already here, <laughs> Uh, equipment named it Poseidon. It's because one of our good friends of uh, Hotel Palladion asked the, to put the name. So Poseidon is supposed to have twice the capacity of the sea turtle. And we are in the process after we test the Poseidon to create a new unit named it uh, Desmi Shark Whale. It's supposed to be even higher capacity than the Poseidon. So that the focus for Desmi now is to increase their mobile capacity because we want to reduce the number of hours operation. To reduce number of hours operations means less energy consumption because the power pack unit will be the same. What we want to increase is the efficiency of the transfer system. This is what we are doing now. Excellent, excellent. I think Tiburon Baina is a very good name for a high capacity system. I think so too. <laughs> Poseidon, I'm not really sure, but it will be a temporary system. So the Poseidon will be like the step to reach the Tiburon Ballena. Uh, a, a transition phase. Yeah. And this system is going to be tested in Mexico. Excellent. Let me ask you a question. You, you, you mentioned the sea turtle stuff and all. And what, what exactly is, is that part of this, the project? Uh, when uh, we begin the project, we were requested by Desmi to have a name to the project to let people that is a project, is not equipment already. So, and then when I have this uh, contact with uh, people in um, in different areas and I mean in uh, in the Caribbean, one of the main concern was if you have a pile of sargasso at the beach, sea tur turtles are not able to lay eggs. And even if they put legs or lie eggs on the beach and you have this pile of sargassum, when you try to remove the sargassum from the beach, those eggs can be destroyed. So we call it the Desmi Sea Turtle Sargasso Project because we were focused in the beginning to protect sea turtles. Is where the name comes from. Excellent. Thank you. That's a that's an awesome way to to be to take that in consideration. Thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. We we got the environmental approval from different entities. We have a meeting in uh, Florida with the uh, API and the Fisher Association and so trying to get the approval. And right now we are with ADEMP, the Environmental Authority, French Environmental Authority, to get the approval as well. So we always try to uh, follow what is the requirements in terms of ecological demands of what we must do in terms of protect the environment. Excellent. Yeah, if you start moving south, I have some good friends in the uh, Belize Fisheries Department as well as the Northern Fishermen's Cooperative I'd love to introduce you to because they, they've been getting hit by this pretty hard too and they, they certainly need some help down there. Okay, great. Rolando, it was so nice talking to you and I think we learned a lot from you and how Desmi came up with this barrier and how there's so many stories behind it. It's just not a company that was like, oh, oh, there's sargassum, let's let's um, profit from this. But there's a lot of personal stories behind it. I really like that. Thank you so much for being on our podcast um, and telling us today about your products. Bienvenidos. It has been a real pleasure. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> yeah, well, well, thank you very much. We'll, we'll, hopefully we'll get to talk to you again real soon. It will be a pleasure. I would like to share with you the results of the new test of the unit. And you are welcome to, if you want, to come to see the performance of the system in life. So we can arrange to have a meeting or to have a place to see it. 
right now we have in Puerto Morelos, we have in Acumal in uh, three different locations. So if you want to see the boon and you want to see the sea turtle systems, we can arrange this for you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. De nada. <laughs> Well, everybody, uh, that was a very interesting conversation we had today, and uh, really enjoyed that. And I uh, particularly like the uh, the way the project started. Not just or, or the initial goals were was to deal with these things while protecting sea turtles from all these other problems that are associated with sargassum, and they uh, and they're taking these things into account. And I think that's just a wonderful, wonderful thing that they're doing. Yeah, I think I mean the whole project started because. He went on vacation and he actually got impacted by sargassum. He got a really bad rash. And imagine, like, so because he works for Desmi and they're making booms and they're making stuff, he was able to then go to Desmi and say, hey, this is a problem. I want to help solve this problem. So this is, for me, this is a really nice coincidence, even though I I hate for him to have experienced this on his vacation. But it's just interesting how to, to see how how different people get to work with sargassum. Everybody has their own yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very very true. Um, I I certainly came into the sargassum thing in a really roundabout way, and all. Um, but thankfully, I didn't get a rash from it and all that. So yeah. Well, anyway, way everyone, thank you so much for being here with us. We'll see you again very soon, and all. And once again, we want to thank the. Uh, Florida International University, Kimberly Green, um, Latin American and uh, Caribbean Center for uh, sponsoring the, the podcast. And, uh, and we'll see you again real soon. See you soon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today and learning with us from our guests. If you want more information about what our guests talked about today, check our show notes for links and information in our archive. And don't forget to like and share our podcast with your friends. If you enjoy our podcast, please consider supporting us financially by becoming a patron. For as little as a dollar per month, you can support us and get the exclusive benefit of submitting questions for our interviewees before the interview. The Sargassum Podcast is produced by Marine Conservation Without Borders and is made possible with financial support and consideration from the Kimberly Green Latin America and Caribbean Center, U.S. Department of Education Title VI grant. It is produced by Jose Martinez, Alex Danielli, Cleo Maradakis, Francisca Elmer, and Alois Lopez, and is hosted by Robbie Figpen, Francisca Elmer, Jenna Contuccio, Florence Menez, Cleo Maradakis, and Paula Diaz. We will be back in two weeks with another exciting guest. The music for the podcast is from the song Then I Pray by Drizzle, the Ron Drama, an artist from Rotten. Follow him on Spotify and YouTube for my music. But for now, this is the full song Then I Pray.